We are holding in chapter 3 in Shao Yichud Vaimuna for the 11th day of Sivan. If you are looking, following us, you can find it in uh, Chayenu, page 85. Today's lesson an illustration of something appearing to exist independently, but when viewed within the context of its source, loses its separateness, is the light of the sun's rays. Lack uh, which lacks significance within the solar globe itself. So it's like I give it a very good example for this. Let's say a big a rabbi feels an important guy, but uh, let's say he's invited to a wedding, right? The rabbi of uh, of Boca Raton, yeah. say Rabbi Goldberg, right? right? It comes to a wedding, but in the wedding suddenly comes the chief rabbi of uh, America, I don't know, of RCA, know how Rabbi Shecht shows up. Oh, yeah, yeah. How does he feel like next to him? Feel, okay, who am I now? It's what like a it? big sun is here. So it says the same thing with the ray of the sun in comparison to the solar globe, to the source of the sun. It, it, so when there's somebody so much greater, it nullifies your own existence, right? Yeah. There was, for example, um, it's really not 100% Negea, but they said they, there's um, COVID, what's COVID? Honor, mm -hmm. right? So it says, I've seen in the head of the table, it gives you COVID, right? right. You, so they said, no, it's not the, the place that gives you COVID, it's the person that gives COVID. For example, mm -hmm. if a Rabbi Vadia, blessed memory, comes and he sits at the edge of the table, not mm -hmm. at the head of the table, so everybody comes and gathers around him, even though he's at the edge of the table, right? right? In the, so it's not that the place gives you honor, if you're sitting in the head, of, it's the person, who is the person? What the, if the chief rabbi sits uh, on this side or that side, it doesn't make a difference, because the honor comes from... Yeah. He, he says, but on a similar note, he says that this, the ray of the sun is completely nullified when, it's, when it meets its source, when right. it meets the... It's like, how would uh, uh, a big shliach, I don't care how big of a shliach, Rabbi Kunin, uh, chief, uh, the head shliach for California, opened so many uh, places. How did he feel next to the Rebbe when he came to the Rebbe? He's like uh, nullified before the Rebbe, right? Right. Why? Because he's, he's next to the solar, next to right. the big light, right? Right. So the same thing over here, we explain illustration of something appearing to exist. It's <laughs> appearing... He's in California, he runs the show there, appearing to exist independently. Yeah. But when he is next to the solar, is no longer, his independence, so to speak, loses itself immediately, next to the big uh, sun. So, the Alte Rebbe proceeds to demonstrate how this is true of creatures that appear to, to be tangible by means of an illustration. Illustration of this is the light of the sun, which illumines the earth and its inhabitants. Shuzi This illumination is the radiance and the light which spreads forth from the body of the sun, and is visible to all as it gives light to the earth and the expense of the universe. It is obvious that this light and radiance is also present in the very body and matter of the sun globe itself in the sky. For it can be spread, if it can be spread forth and shine to such a great distance then certainly it can shed light in its own place. So why doesn't it give light in its own place? The ray of the suns, if their functionality is to give light, so when they are in their source, they can also give light. Why don't they give light when they are in their source? Because over there in its source, this ray considers nothing, considers not insignificant. Think about a small candle that you put it in a big uh, uh, bonfire. It still has light, but the light is insignificant. Right. 
כי בו, תלמר משום ציור זה גם בגלל דבר השמש שהוא מכיר העיר, והזיו הזה for it is absolutely non-existent in relation to the body of the sun, of the sun globe, which is the source of this light and radiance. שהזיו, העיר הזה נורא כאור מאיר ומגוף עצם כדור השמש, in as much as this radiance. And light is merely the illumination which shines from the body of the sun globe itself. Since the sun's light is merely an illumination deriving from the sun, it is in a state of a complete nothingness. While it is found within the sun's globe itself, one cannot say that within the body of the sun there is sunlight. Only the sun itself is found there. The essence of the sun is there. It's not light. You cannot limit the sun to say light, that's it. What we receive, what we see is the, is the expansion of the sun, is what the sun gives out. It is only in the space of the universe, under the heavens and so the earth, where the body of the sun globe is not present. And all that is seen is but an illumination that animates from it. That this light and radiance appears to the eye of all beholders to have actual existence. Going to page 86. And here, here in this world, the term existence, yes, can truly be applied. Can truly be applied to it. The sun's light and rays as they appear outside of the sun globe can truly be said to exist in as much as the sun itself is not found there. Whereas when it is in its source, in the body of the sun, the term existence cannot be applied to it at all. It can only be called not a non-existent. Ki be'emes hu shom le'ayin ve'efes mamesh. She'ein me'ir shom rak mekir levadi shu'guf ha'shemesh ha'meir ve'efes bilodi. There it is indeed not an absolutely non-existent, for there only its source, the luminous body of the sun, gives light, and there is nothing beside it. To sum up, although the sun's rays are surely found within the body of the sun, they cannot be said to exist there. They are found there in a manner of non-existence, in a state in which their separate identity is, utter, is utterly nullified. They don't have a separate identity anymore. That which can be deemed to exist within the sun globe can be nothing other than the sun itself. The exact parallel to this illustration is the relationship between all created beings and the um, divine flow of the life force that emanates from the breath of his mouth, which flows upon them and brings, brings them into existence and is their source. The heim atzmum ein amra ki meir v'ziv mispash v'na shefa v'ruach havaya shefia muslavish v'seich o mitziyo ma'in liyesh. However, the created beings themselves are merely like a diffusing light and efflu... Efflugens, right? Efflugens from the flow and Spirit of God, which means the flow, affluence, which issues forth from Him and becomes closed in them and brings them from naught into being. <laughs> Hence, their existence is nullified in relation to the Source, just as the light of the sun is nullified and is considered not an utter nothingness. And is not at all referred to as existing when it is within its source, the sun, the term existence applied to it only beneath the heavens, where it is, source, 
where its source is not present. Then it's called existence, when the source is not present. Its present, it's, it's present is removed, is concealed. So when it comes to us, Buim, the created beings, existing, to say that you are existing, this table is existing, is only when the source is concealed, is hidden. So it's, it looks like it's existing. It looks like it's independent. For we do not see it, no, we do not, we do not see, no, at all comprehend the source, which is the Spirit of God that brings them into existence. Therefore, since we do not see nor comprehend their source, it appears to our eyes that the physicality, materiality, and tangibility of created things actually exist. Just as the light of the sun appears to exist fully when it's not within its source and is found within the expanse of the universe. In truth, the source of all creatures is constantly found within them. Our failure to perceive this, notwithstanding, hence their existence is totally nullified in relation to their source, and they cannot be said to truly exist. So nothing in this world is truly exist. Just because we don't see the source, it, doesn't, it does not mean it's not there. Maybe we're all holograms. One thing is for sure, we are not independent beings. We are totally dependent beings on the, God, on the godly light, on the godly force that em emanates us every single second. That's for sure. And when you say, Ein oid milvadoi, there's nothing but Hashem. That's what really it means. Because what, who is the real you is the source that gives you life. Right. Without that, there's really nothing. Right. So that's why you say, Einod Milvado, there's nothing but Hashem. Everything is Elikus, everything is godliness. Right. But in the following respect, the illustration is apparently, the Moshul is, the illustration is apparently not completely identical with the object of comparison. For in the illustration, the source, the sun, is not present at all in the expanse of the universe. And upon the earth, the sun is not really here. If the sun was here, the world would not be able to endure the intensity of the sun itself. Where its light is seen as actually existing, what do we see? Only the light of the sun. We don't see the sun itself. Can you look at the sun? No one can look at the sun. Since the sun itself is not present upon the earth, it rays, its rays are able to assume a seeming reality of their own. It is therefore readily understandable why they are perceived as existing independently. By contrast, all created beings are always within their source. They're not separated from the, from the source when it comes to created being. It comes to the ray of the sun, they're somewhat removed from its source. When it comes to human be created beings, they are always connected to their source. By contrast, all created beings are always within their source, the divine activating force, which is continuously found within them, constantly creating and animating them ex nihilo. <laughs> And it is only that the source is not visible to our physical eyes. Since in reality they are indeed within the source at all times. Now the million dollar question. Why are they not nullified in their source? Why are creatures not nullified within their source? Is an obvious and revealed manner so that there is no mistaking uh, there's no mistaking them as independently existing beings. To understand this, some prefatory remarks are necessary. The Alter Rebbe will uh, go on to explain that the divine power of concealment and contraction is, res is responsible for hiding God's light, 
so that it will not be perceptible to created beings. This enables creation to, to be perceived as possessing existence in parentheses, whereas in reality it is totally nullified within its source. So the takeaway from today's Tanya, you don't see your godly source of energy. So you lose that proper reference, uh, so you lose that proper reference point of real truth. In truth, you're really totally subsumed within the oneness of God. Everything is truly divine. Buchim Tiyu, and we shall continue, God willing, tomorrow.